Hey, thanks to our partners AMP. Where do you draw the line when communicating in the workplace? Is it ever okay to call your boss dude or drop the F-bomb? Career expert Laurel McClay joins me now. Laurel, good morning. Good morning. It's great to effing see you. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, you know, when I say or drop the F-bomb, you know, I work in an industry where it is certain, it wouldn't raise any eyebrows if you hear someone shout out the F-word. Well, you're in media mm. and other places are that, that welcome the F word are uh, technology. Um, you know, places are startups, as I think was said by a panel before, but government, retail, human resources, that's where they're going to be a little bit more careful. But it does depend on the company mm. and, the, and the leadership as well. And how do you know if you're starting out in a, in a company? Because the thing is, we all behave pretty much the same way outside. You know, when we're dealing with our families, when we're just sitting there watching television, when we're just going about our normal life. And then you get to work and for some people um, the rules are going to be different than for others. Yeah, well, I think the, the way to find out is just get out there and don't offer it. Uh, when we're talking about inappropriate, inappropriate, that's such a uh, word, isn't it? Mm, mm. Um, it's like, what is appropriate, what's not appropriate? So just far better to err on the side of not saying anything until you get the lay of the land. Yeah, and then all of a sudden someone does it, and before you know it, the whole room's swearing like troopers, thinking, thank God. Um, the boundaries are shifting, though, aren't they? And, I mean, it's not just language. I mean, clothing as well. I mean, people, you, you walk into businesses now, you wouldn't know they're dressed for work, because in many cases they haven't. How, to what extent are the boundaries changing with language? Well, I think a lot of it is about cultural norms and, and popular culture. So if you think about like the Wolf of Wall Street, for example, that broke a record with a reference to the F word over 500 times. Mm. I'm thinking Breaking Bad, there's probably a more recent one where it's just completely acceptable to hear it. So that's what drives it is what used to be taboo 20 years ago, just now isn't. The Broadcasting Stance Authority does a survey about every four years yep. and it's got a list of all the words. You can go and Google it mm. and every single word without fail is more acceptable considered now than it was in 1999. Mm. Well, there are some possible exceptions to that, though, but they tend not to be swear words. They're words that for some, you know, religious That's reason right. or, exactly. or secular yeah, reason. Yeah, like diversity yeah. stuff. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Um, how do you enforce it because there'll be a lot of smaller companies maybe even retail companies or something like that and if you're an employer and you do not like the way a couple of your staff members are speaking mm. how do you enforce that well i think you've got to be straight and and i think sharing the concern is good so you might want to say something along the lines of look i don't want to come across as a bit of a prude but it would be really nice if we didn't do that i think the other thing you can use is that we've had a lot of change in the workplace um harassment uh, practices and bullying and now we don't need to show intent for why we feel we were bullied. And so sexual harassment can actually be about saying something a little bit derogatory. Mm. Um, and if someone says something considered to be a little inappropriate, then they can be hauled over the coals for that. A lot of, okay, and so people want to know how you do that. Employers want to know how you do that, smaller employers in particular. Because, of course, it is very hard to enforce things sometimes if you don't do it the right way. So how do you communicate a policy like that if, say, you've been a little bit lax on it in the past and it's just been grating with you? Well, the first thing is don't do it yourself. And I, I know that sounds really obvious, mm. but it is do as I say, not as I do. You know, that, that whole thing. Um, it really is just about communication, isn't but it? But you have the right, do you, as an employer, to say, I don't like the way you're talking and I'm not going to put up with it any longer. I mean, how, how do you create an environment whereby you then <laughs> throw the person down the road, that's it, you've lost your job, I told you not to do this, and they don't have a come back on Well, it. I don't know that there'd be a, a grounds for that, but I think it's just about good behaviour. It's like you called about dude. Is like you've got to just go with, with what works with the, the whole culture and and bail people up, but but it doesn't need to be in a in a nasty way. You no, know? no, it is. The, the whole dude thing is funny, though, because you hear some <laughs> people who... People have very different, um, very different approaches to authority figures, don't they? And in the one workplace, you'll have some people who are still using Mr. Some people may be at the extreme still saying Sir. <laughs> very rarely... Um, but then others who use the term dude and things like that, which I think is a bit off, quite frankly. I wouldn't like anyone to call me dude around here. Laurel, thank you very much. Thanks.